it might sound like you're complaining or say, oh, poor white people, poor white males can't get work. It does, on the face of it, sound a bit ridiculous, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, look, I mean, after this happened, I started a podcast. I started filming videos every day. I built my career up on the internet. You know, I, I pulled in six figures last year. I mean, like, uh, but but that's not what it's about. It's about everybody gets a fair shot. Entertainment has never been about everybody getting a fair shot. That's just not the way the world of entertainment works. If you want a level playing field, there are careers that you can take that might be a little more level, but there's always going to be politics that come into play. There's always going to be a bit of race that comes into play. The amounts that people can or will admit to it are going to vary. But as far as looking for a level playing field, I don't really think that entertainment is where you go for that. Is it a policy, like, explicit that they're not taking on any, like, white men, or is it, like, case by case? On camera talent, stand up, probably not. No. Comedian Tyler Fisher claims he has been turned down by three agencies because they said they just weren't looking for white men to book at this time. How are people so comfortable talking about it? Tyler Fisher, you've had a recent run in with this affirmative action hiring problem that we're having right now. I worked with the agent who emailed me and I said, why, why no auditions? You know, and he just emailed me and he wrote tough out there for white dudes. And I had a complete mental breakdown. Is this a case of racism or are you just not in fashion right now? What's up everybody? Ty Rivera here, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. All right, so today we're going to be talking about a story that was brought to my attention by Leonardo Joni's podcast, Wrong Crowd. And the original video I saw that she put out about it was called No Whites Allowed. And it was about a comedian by the name of Tyler Fisher that I have not met yet, but has recently moved to Austin or is moving to Austin. I'm not sure. Either way, everything I say in this video is not not meant to be derogatory towards Tyler. I'm just looking at this as a story that I have some opinions on because I have been a person of color in the entertainment industry for the last 21 years. I know to a lot of you, you just look at me as white and I get that. I have very pale skin and to the naked eye, it would seem like I'm a white man. I don't want to lose any followers when I say this. I am actually Mexican American. <laughs> I know, a lot of you thought I was Asian. Of course you did. Anyway, not the case. I am Mexican American, obviously have brown skin. So a lot of what he's talking about here, I do have personal feelings about, and I'm really going to be relying on you guys in the comments on this one, because I feel like it's going to be hard for me to be unbiased. I'm just going to come right out and admit that in the beginning. So before we go any further, I am going to ask that you like, comment, and subscribe, because I know some some white people are really going to come for my neck on this. Some of you might be coming for my neck. I don't know who's going to come for my neck, but leave a knife because my neck is going to be come for. <laughs> I don't even know if that's the way you'd phrase that. Came for. <laughs> Either way, it sounds gross, but that's not the way I mean it. Anyway, so let's talk about this story. So apparently Tyler Fisher was having a problem where agents and managers were not looking to represent him. Tyler took the new school route and really started working on his social media and got himself to where he's making six figures a year. And he's created his own path. He's able to tour as a comedian, which in this way, I will also admit that I really really do admire and respect Tyler, but he's still upset with this particular management company that he was able to get to admit on the phone that the reason they weren't representing him or able to represent him was because he is in fact a white man. Now, when it comes to him still pursuing this, there is a part of me that can't help but feel like once you've won at life, I think that that should be the end of any other arguments. I don't really understand when people hold on to things, even if they're based on principle, because at a certain point, it doesn't matter anymore. You've made it. You got to where you wanted to be. But again, maybe this is where you guys can come in and help me. So I'm going to play the clip of him on the Dr. Phil show because Dr. Phil ended up finding out about his story and wanted to talk to him about it. So he went on Dr. Phil. During his Dr. Phil appearance, he was against a liberal professor, but they're not really going to be too central to the story as far as I go, so I didn't bother even getting their names down. This is more about the situation that Tyler's having and my personal feelings on the way that this all plays out. 
Tyler Fisher, you've had a recent run in with this affirmative action hiring problem that we're having right now. I worked with an agent who emailed me and I said, why, why no auditions? You know, and he just emailed me and he wrote tough out there for white dudes. And then uh, not long after removed me from the roster. And I had a complete mental breakdown. I, I'm just thinking, how is this happening? And how are people so comfortable talking about it? I hate to interrupt so fast, but only in white America can somebody be like, how is this happening? And <laughs> how can people be so comfortable talking about it? Because this is where, like I said, my experience in the entertainment industry definitely does color, no pun intended, the way that I see this. Because for years and generations, if you're a person of color, you know that this is the way that it works. We were always told as people of color that they weren't looking for us. Like castings would ask for or specific types of people. And in a lot of cases, they weren't looking for black, Latino, or biracial. And sometimes you would get sent out to audition or read for things anyway. I chose not to do a lot of that stuff because I knew that my route was mainly stand-up comedy, but I definitely have had managers before. Never had an official agent, but definitely have had some managers. And that was always the thing. Also, if you were gay or Latino, they wanted you to really play up what you were. So for a person like me that's been so Americanized or as some people would say whitewashed and doesn't speak Spanish or doesn't have an accent or at that time didn't have tattoos on my face so wasn't going to be able to play like the gangbanger or anything like that. It also was hard. Then when it came to being gay, in a lot of cases they would hire straight actors to play gay characters because if a straight man plays a gay man, they're really going to amp it up because they're playing gay and what their idea of gay is, where if you get a gay man like me, I'm like, anything I do is gay. I had that problem on a play once. So when he's really confused about how this could possibly be happening, that's where he definitely does lose me because it's like, yeah, for people of color, this has always been a thing. There also have been fewer parts for people of color up until just recently. And that has led to a lot of infighting when it comes to people of color. Like if you're in the comedy industry, you know that Latino comics a lot of times don't get along with each other and there is a lot of competition. Same with black comics, same with black actors, same with black models to a certain degree. And this doesn't go across the board, but sometimes when you wonder when there's a lot of infighting between say Cedric the Entertainer and Cat Williams or Steve Harvey and Bernie Mac, pick any famous feud as far as people of color go, Naomi Campbell and Tyra Banks. It was because for a long time, because of the scarcity in the industry, people felt protective of their positions and they felt like they had to keep other people out or they felt like the other person was going to take over where they were which it wasn't to the extreme of there only being one but that was the mentality that a lot of people of color within the entertainment industry had because the industry made you feel like you weren't going to have many opportunities so that led to a really cutthroat situation between people of color within the entertainment industry and for me personally I just went the opposite way and for the most part just didn't hang out with other Latino comics or other gay comics respectively because while I didn't feel feelings of competition towards them I would notice in a lot of cases they would start to feel that towards me and then it would turn into a weird situation so being baffled by the fact that this is the way the industry works the fact that he's white does kind of show here because it's just is not a new thing at all. Comedian Tyler Fisher claims he has been turned down by three agencies because they said they just weren't looking for white men to book at this time. Tyler, thanks for being here. Thank you, thank you. I do I identify as a Latino female now, so <laughs> just adjust my pronouns. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I've, I've been in the entertainment business for 17 years, and I, I think what we're not talking about is children right now. Thank God I had about five years where this was not happening, where race was not pounded over your head. This is destroying people's lives. Yes. You know, 
the manager that told me. Okay, this has been the reality of being a person of color in this country for generations now. So he says he's had about five years where this isn't happening. He's been in for 17 years. So for 12 years, this has been a thing for him. I would argue as a person that's also in the entertainment industry that this hasn't been a thing when it comes to the DEI and using more people of color until maybe the last 10 years because it was around 2014 that people were talking about talking about but not really doing anything about at that point and then it did start to slow down as far as people looking for more comedians and people of color that did comedy and acting and that's when white men started to fall out of fashion when it came to stand-up comedy and when it came to entertainment so even if you took him at his word and said 12 years that's not even a full generation and I'm not saying that this should happen to anybody but just to be choked up over it and be like I'm worried for the children it's like people of color have grown up knowing that there was going to be a ceiling or a glass ceiling for generations and generations and now it happens to a couple white guys for 12 years and suddenly we're choked up and it can't be stood for it was not happening where race was not pounded over your head just really quick, if you're a person of color, your entire life race has been pounded over your head. And that wasn't always just coming from other people of color. This is destroying people's lives. Yes. You know, the manager that told me, I can't work with you because you're white, he was, he was a pawn, you know? And so it's so sad because I feel so bad for kids who won't have that chance. They're going to go, oh, I'm told I'm white, so I'm not going to go for it. Again, people of color have been dealing with this for generations and generations. And I'm not saying that something shouldn't be done about it. And I'm not one of those people that feels like now white people should have a turn too. But at the same time, I think that in this situation, Tyler would maybe get a little bit more support from people of color if he were to acknowledge that this has been happening for people of color for generations and generations. And now let's not do a turnabout as fair places situation for white men because of the way that they're born and no matter who you are you shouldn't be discriminated against based on how you're born but to act like this is the first time in history this has ever happened and I'm choked up I'm crying because you're crying because it's your turn and it sucks and that's what people of color have been trying to tell you guys all along is that this sucks and yes it does suck that parents would have to tell their kids that certain things weren't going to be possible when I was young to be 100% honest, if you told somebody that there was ever going to be a black president, they would have laughed in your face. Legitimately, you would have got your face laughed in. That's why so many of us really did celebrate Barack Obama the way we did, and some of us still do consider him a hero on certain levels because he broke that ceiling and he let people of color know that was at least an option. And Barack Obama himself is biracial. But everybody looks at him as a hero because he at least represents a person of color actually making it to be president, which we never thought was possible in the first place. What would you say to a five-year-old or a six-year-old, no matter what their race is? Should you, like, what would you, what would you actually tell them? You know, should you give your job up? And let me ask you directly, do you think it was justified for me to be told, we can't represent you, you don't have the chance to now compete for jobs because you're white? Yes or no? Was that okay or was that not okay? I think that what is described yes, by no, you. Don't give me your little. Well, no, like, let me finish. Wrap. What, yes what is described no. by you, someone telling you that you can't get, get that job because you're white, does not sound right to me. Well, it's let's also hear what illegal, actually right? said. It's not right. See, I think a less defensive posture would serve him well in this situation because you have to understand that whether or not you agree with this professor or not, he is a black man. So he's probably going through some of the same thoughts that I just expressed and feeling like, yeah, you kind of have a lot of nerve trying to come at me with this type of anger and this type of energy when people of color have been going through this. And it's probably only because you're white that that particular manager or agent felt comfortable leveling with you and telling you what it was because for people of color we've always known what it was but in some cases they wouldn't even bother to tell us outright they would just assume that we must know and they also if we were to press them on it would act like we had a lot of nerve to even bring it up to them so
making this but up. Let me say this. He, he recorded the call with an agent. He claims turned him down for being white. So let's listen to the call. Is it a policy like explicit that they're not taking on any like white men or is it like case by case? On camera talent, stand up, probably not. No. Okay, so no, so no white men are allowed for on camera stuff. I guess it's, it's right now where it stands, but like, yeah, it could change in a year depending on if casting directors, that's not their feedback anymore, or not even casting directors, you know, studios, whatever maybe, where it's like, this is what we're looking for. I don't know. Uh, more diverse would be the actual. Yeah, yeah. Right. It'll go so far until a white person will have to be the diverse hire. Which is happening. <laughs> Which yeah. is happening? There's, 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 there's racially discriminated stand-up comedy shows in New York City. I did a show the other day, and they said, "Are you doing the next show?" And I said, "Yeah." The guy said, "I didn't know you were gay." He said, "This is a gays-only show." And so, gay is not a race. So I know what he's saying because they will have gay-specific shows, and they also do have black or Latino shows. But the irony of him bringing this up as being racially discriminated was those shows were created because a lot of times, if you were gay, black, Latino, anything other than a white man, you were a lot of times considered a novelty and had less opportunities. So that. That's why they started creating Urban Night, and that's what they would call the Black Night, or Latino Night, or Gay Night, or Women's Only Shows. Those all came because if you were anything other than a white man, you were considered to be a token if you were to make it onto one of the regular shows, one of the mainstream shows, or you wouldn't get a spot at all because it wasn't a gay show, because it wasn't a black show. Even as recently as within the last seven years, I have had one friend that worked for an agency and there was a very smart, funny, successful female comic that happens to be black. And I wouldn't say happens to be black because she wouldn't be what you would consider the typical performs for a black audience, does black rooms. So just to make that distinction, I would say happens to be black. And her agency was having a hard time getting work for her because every time they would submit her to a comedy club, the comedy club would come back and say that they weren't an urban club, meaning they're not a black club. So again, this has been going on for years and years and years in the comedy industry. It's just really starting to affect white men now, which is to white men when it starts to matter because there's also a point where he was talking on his podcast and he says, it's a battle I'm going to fight and I'm not going to stop because I think it's uh, destroying this country. I think identity politics and uh, this ra new racial discrimination is uh, it's destroying the, co the country. Well, you don't seem to have a problem with the old discrimination that was tearing this country apart. Then it was just fine. But now that it's affected you, this new discrimination is tearing this country apart all of a sudden. That's why Hollywood sucks right now, by the way. Because they're not hiring based on talent. Hollywood has never booked or judged based on talent. Hollywood has always been, for the most part, about what's popular, what sells. And if you want to talk about talent, when it came to being a person of color or an LGBT person, if you were going to be open about it, if you wanted to make it in Hollywood, you either had to be really what they wanted as far as willing to say the things that they wanted you to say or you had to be not only exceptionally talented but have those right time right moment situations happen in your life it really did have to be a perfect storm for some of the situations that you see right now that we all hold up sort of like a will smith or a denzel washington which i know will smith whatever with the slap and jada and all that but you have to admit that he did reach a level that a lot of people don't reach and that's in a lot of cases what it took and it's kind of what might be bothering me about this is if you're a person of color you have to be exceptional to get anywhere in this industry but in a lot of cases when you're a white person you could be very average and still make it to wherever you needed to be and I think that that's what's bothering a lot of these white guys is that now the pressure is on them as well to be exceptional and being average isn't going to cut it what do we do about heart surgeons airplane pilots like how far do we want to go with this
Do you want the best heart surgeon or do you want somebody who you think may have had it bad as a kid or maybe their great great grandfather? I mean, this is it's ridiculous. Well, the problem for me and what is ridiculous is we're not talking about heart surgeons and we're not talking about pilots. What we're talking about is comedians and actors. So when it comes to comedians and actors, your entire act is usually based on your life, your ethnicity, your life experiences, your observations. So the things that he mentions, like having it tough when they were growing up and things like that, a lot of those things do actually serve as your emotional draw if you're going to be an actor and will give you more depth. They also do serve as what what you draw from when it comes to your stand-up comedy. So sometimes those colors are going to paint the most vivid pictures and the fact that people have had certain experiences. So I don't really buy his argument that this is the same as choosing a doctor. And when it comes to ethnicity and that kind of thing, not only has it been so clear that you had to be white to make it for a long time there, or you had to be white to really get noticed or be able to work, there are very famous situations of people that were white presenting they would say that ended up having to change their names so that they would get success like martin sheen was actually born ramon estevez that's why his son is emilio estevez but martin sheen legendary actor changed his name from ramon estevez to now being martin sheen and that was done in 1958 so that lets you know how long it was here's where it says sheen was born ramon estevez however due to prejudices in the industry he changed his professional name to martin sheen in 1958 in a bid to land more acting roles. Also famous actor Anthony Quinn. Anthony Quinn was actually born Antonio Rodolfo Quinn Oaxaca. According to the actor, the decision was influenced by his desire to be accepted by American audiences and, and it ended up happening for him. Raquel Welch actually hid the fact that she was Latina for a long time and didn't come out as Latina until I think it was the early 2000s that she actually came out and said it. Her original name was Raquel Tejada and then she got married her last name became Welch and then she got pressured to change her first name from Raquel to Debbie because they thought Raquel sounded too ethnic so that gives you an idea of how long this has been an actual thing in Hollywood like I said it's just now happening to white people so they feel like it's suddenly more of a thing and when Leonardo on her podcast who I'm very good friends with Leonardo so I'm definitely not coming at her but this is just something that I have feelings about. There's a point where Leonardo said, could you imagine if this was happening to anybody else? And it's like, yeah, like it happened to all of us from 10 years ago to everything preceding that. So yeah, we definitely can imagine if this was happening to everybody else. Really, it did used to happen to everybody else. And that's why there's parts of me that really do feel this guy, Tyler Fisher, and I really do respect what he's built for himself. But I'm not going to break out a violin for him because he's now experiencing what a lot of us have been going through for our entire careers now. So now I'm going to cut to a clip where he's talking about his experience when he tweeted about it originally and he didn't get the kind of support that maybe he thought he would get or he was hoping to get. Happy I went. Happy I went. It's good that it's out now. I don't have to worry. But uh, the attacks were pretty wild when I just tweeted out. All I did was tweet out, hey, I got fired or not, or not hired for my skin color. So this is where I think that Tyler is trying to speak in legal ease because he does have a lawsuit, but I believe that he's using the terms fired or didn't get hired because that's where you'll have a case for discrimination. But that is not the most honest way to represent the situation because if you know anything about having an agent or a manager, you usually give your agent or manager a percentage of what it is you make so technically they work for you and my feeling is instead of being upset about this he should be glad that these people passed on him and didn't get to make the money off of him and this should be a situation where he walks in like that scene off pretty woman and gives them the you work on commission right uh yes big mistake big 
huge. Because that's literally what they do is work off commission. So it was a big mistake. It was a huge mistake that they made in not taking him on as a client. But I don't really think, and I could be wrong about this. Clearly, I'm not a lawyer. Look at me. But I really don't think he has much of a case when it comes down to it because the agents and the managers are just in charge of sending you out for the opportunities that are available. The agents and the managers don't actually create the opportunities. Who the real problem would be and who hasn't said anything outright that says that they support this thinking or they thought that way is Netflix or Amazon Prime or Network TV. None of them have come out and made an official statement or talked to Tyler on the phone and said that they will not hire or cast white men. And I think what the agent or the manager might have left out is that right now they aren't taking on any clients that are average white men, which again is not an insult to Tyler at all, but he does have a very average look. He's not particularly striking. And if you notice, that's a really big thing right now on TV is the white men that they do have on TV and the white women that they have on TV for the most part are very striking. Like that's what they're looking for. If you're going to be on a Netflix series, if you're going to be on anything that's not reality based and even in the reality based situations, they're still looking for people that are particularly striking. That's kind of always been the game. And Tyler is kind of an average looking man. Again, that's not an insult at all. He himself admits that he's five foot two, I believe he said, which if that is in fact true, he's a five foot two. I believe he said he's 38 years old now. Very average looking white man. Now ask yourself, how many roles are there for 38 year old, five foot two, very average looking white men? I'm completely cool with just wanting to people to honestly make things so that they go to the best person for the particular job. But again, if they're looking for a tall biracial man that can play, say, teenage role, and then Tyler at 38 years old, five foot two and white walks in the room, I don't think he's going to be the best person for that job. And that's probably what the agent or manager left out was that that also factors in. All of these things do factor in. To me, going after the agent or the manager and claiming that it's racism makes as much sense as if you sold something. And let's make it ethnic just to give it a race element to it. But let's say you sold tortillas. And so you go to a particular store where their market is not at all interested in buying tortillas. Tortillas are not going to sell. And the buyer for the store says to you, we're not going to be able Able to order any tortillas from you because tortillas just aren't moving in this particular market. So there's no reason for us to take an order of tortillas from you because we're not going to be able to sell them anyway. So at that point, what you should probably do is find a place that is looking to buy tortillas. And that's exactly what Tyler did was he went to the internet and apparently the internet loved his brand of tortillas because he's very successful right now and doing very well. He found his market Market. He found his buyers. So what's he upset about? Because he got told no. This is the entertainment industry. We all get told no at different points. I have a problem right now with the particular comedy club about that. And I stand by mine. But at the same time, I'm not trying to get in there. And I'm certainly not looking to sue them. I just will talk about it because it's part of my life experience. And that's something that I wouldn't mind at all. If Tyler was talking about this just from a part of his story and giving a kind of in your face to the industry and being like, well, you slept on me, but I think the suing them is probably where it's maybe a bridge too far for me and expecting people of color to really buy in and feel like he's dealing with something that nobody's ever dealt with before. This isn't OK. I want this to end and I'm not settling in the lawsuit. And man, I got ripped apart. I got a lot of support. So thank you for the support. But it's it really sums up the time we live in where you can be discriminated against simply say I'm fighting this it's not okay it's not legal and I'm taking these people to court and be called a racist and I don't think a lot of people realize that Rosa Parks was ostracized from her own community she was considered a troublemaker Rosa Parks didn't just come off as a hero when she refused to get out of her seat of the bus this is just a part of being that if you're going to be a revolutionary if you're going to stand against the machine even if people agree with you and think that you're right on certain levels or people that would benefit from the changes that you're going to make are in a lot of cases going to turn on you and not 
not have your back. Believe me, again, that's something I'm going through right now with my situation in the comedy world. There are plenty of people that support what it is I'm saying and support what it is that I have said, but they can't be open about it. And some are even being derogatory about it because they don't want to get backlash from the majority. So if Tyler is going to be this person, then he should have been ready for that to begin with because historically, this is just what happened. Shut up, white boy, and all this stuff. Shut up, white boy. I like how he does it in a sort of borderline redneck voice so that it portrays that he's going through the racism that others have gone through before him. I tell you guys, I, there's a part of me that really supports him, but there's a part of me that's also like, white man, slow down. It's wild. We live in an incredibly hypocritical moment right now. It's a bizarre, bizarre thing to witness. And it's getting worse by the day. And a lot of people I know are, are starting to notice it. This is how I know it's gone too far. I mean, I have friends that are all over the political spectrum. And I don't see my friends through a political filter. I don't think you should see anything through a political filter except politics, not people. I have friends that are starting to come to me and just say, this is, man, I'm getting attacked at the comedy clubs or I'm getting attacked at work and all this anti-white hate is out of control. And I could see them like, they're going to be, you know, whatever. They're going to, they'll vote with their fingers or whatever they say. All right. So that gives you guys an idea of where Tyler's coming from and what's been going on. I really am relying on you guys on this one to leave your comments and let me know how you feel. I know some of you are really going to disagree with me and I respect that. I get it. But at the same time, like I said, I don't really know that this one is as much about racism because we're dealing with the entertainment industry and not just about you not being in fashion. Like there's a line in a song that I like by Jewel and that song is called called intuition and there's a line where she's referring to Jennifer Lopez and Kate Moss because right before Jennifer Lopez really broke with her more curvy feature which is now not really considered that curvy at all but JLo is known for her big butt and she came in right after the waif model craze had been going on where everybody was super thin and basically a coat hanger and so there's a line in the song Intuition by Jewel where she she says, they say Miss J's big butt is boss. Kate Moss can't find a job, which was just painting that at that time, the skinny, skinny models, what they would call at that time, heroin chic had fallen out of fashion. And now the curvy was in and the skinny, skinny models were having trouble finding work because it just wasn't what the industry was looking for at the time. So if it had been a situation like Tyler brought up in his examples where he said, if it was a pilot or a hard heart surgeon or even a grocery store clerk or anything like that. I definitely do agree that's discrimination. But when it comes to this being the entertainment industry and an agent or a manager just saying, I can't do anything with you. I can't do anything for you. In a way, I do feel like that's actually a nicer thing for the agent or the manager to do instead of wasting your time and just having you there and you not being able to pursue another agent or another manager manager or be pursued by another agent or another manager that might actually be able to help you that might actually be able to get you the kind of work that you want instead you're being held up by this agent or manager that knew they couldn't do anything to help you to begin with anyway let me know what you guys think down below in the comments please be respectful of each other and please try your best to be respectful of me because i'm just trying to be 100 percent honest with you guys and let you know maybe the way that some of us as people of color might might look at this or me personally specifically having been in the entertainment industry might shed some light on a different way for you to at least look at this I'm not saying adopt my way of thinking or that you're wrong if you don't think like me that's not what I'm saying at all I'm just saying that the things that I present in this video may be something for you guys to take into consideration maybe when you hear stories like this anyway as always this has been Ty Rivera the absolute best LGBT comedian in the world. Mm -hmm.